Good evening. This is Elaine Supkiss of Culture of Life News. We finally got the CIA secret reports on torture. Obama says he doesn't want to punish anybody. After reading some of this information, on the other hand, I say we must punish everyone all the way to the top, just like we punished the Germans after World War II because they did the exact same thing. Let me read from the report here. It says, in the report written in May 30th, 2005, which was not that long ago, we conclude the territory under the United States jurisdiction includes, at most, areas over which the United States exercises at least de facto authority as the government. Based on CIA assurances, we understand that the interrogations did not take place in any such area. This is like the Nazis saying, well, we tortured them in Russia. <laughs> we killed them in Poland, but not in Germany. Okay? <sighs> Further, the United States undertook its obligations under Article 16, subject to a Senate reservation, which, as relevant here, explicitly limits those obligations to the cruel, unusual, and inhumane treatment prohibited by the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. That's that piece of paper that nobody cares about anymore. There's a strong argument that though this reservation, the Senate, that through this reservation, the Senate intended to limit the scope of the United States obligations under Article 16 to those imposed by the relevant provisions of the Constitution. As construed by the courts, the Fifth Amendment does not apply to aliens outside the United States. In other words, we can be complete bastards if we leave our own country. Who cares what the Constitution says? It only applies when someone comes here, and not even then, because they tortured an American citizen, you know. His name is Padilla. <sighs> the CIA has assured us that the interrogation techniques are not used within the United States or against United States persons. Padilla was not tortured by the CIA. He was tortured by the Navy. <sighs> anyway, it says that because they didn't torture Americans, they therefore were not covered by the Constitution. They further say the Supreme Court has emphasized that whether conduct shocks the conscience is highly context-specific and fact-dependent question. <sighs> The court, however, has not set forth with precision a specific test for ascertaining, it's hard to read this, it's rather faded, whether conduct can be said to shock the conscience and has disclaimed the ability to do so. The court doesn't know what's shocking, okay? They rule on pornography cases, they know what pornography is, but shocking torture? No. That's because I'm not on the Supreme Court. I know what torture is. It's happened to me. It happened to me <laughs> horribly. So I know exactly what torture is. I know it when I see it. And it doesn't take much to see it. <sighs> anyway, the court has not set forth with precision a specific test for discerning whether conduct is said to be shocking the conscience. What sort of test do they need? The Spanish Inquisition test? Oh, all we're doing is turning a crank and stretching his body. That's not torture. Right? That seems to be their context here. Moreover, there are a few Supreme Court cases addressing whether conduct shocks the conscience. And the few cases there have all risen from very different contexts from the ones we consider here. I don't even want to think of what those contexts are. Moreover, the techniques have been carefully designed to minimize the risk of suffering or injury and to avoid inflicting any serious or lasting physical or psychological harm. Medical screening. The Nazis had a lot of doctors in their Nazi concentration death camps, didn't they? A lot of them. They had way too many, in fact. Anyway, they're monitoring the torture which is what the Spanish Inquisition did. They used to monitor people very closely. They were not supposed to kill them, you see. Otherwise, they were breaking the law. 
But as long as they tortured them and the person didn't die, they were free and clear. <sighs> anyway, an ongoing evaluation further lowers such risk. Oh, God. Significantly, you have informed us that the CIA believes that this program is largely responsible for preventing subsequent attacks on the United States because the CIA interrogation program is carefully limited to further a vital government interest and designed to avoid unnecessary or serious harm. We conclude it's not constitutionally, constitutionally arbitrary. This is very hard for me to do. This is extremely painful. My father is one of the founders of the CIA, and I fought with him through much of my childhood on the issue of, is the CIA protecting America or destroying America by turning us into Nazis? And he said, it doesn't matter what we do as long as we're doing it for good reasons. And I said, uh-uh, oh, uh-uh, it matters very much what we do, how we do it, and to whom we do it. So, who did we torture with this ruling? Who are they talking about? I'll tell you who they're talking about. A seven and a nine-year-old children. They tortured two children who were very, very young, who were at the age I was when I was tortured for four months. Now, my torture only lasted for a couple of hours when I was kidnapped and raped. But the pain and suffering carried through years and years and years. I had to be operated on to save my reproductive systems. And when I finally managed to have a child, when I was 23 years old, my doctor was actually crying because he was so happy that I was able to have a child and that his surgery worked. <sighs> Falling in love with somebody and doing things with them was a really difficult thing for me. It was, I still suffer from this. Even though the man confessed, he never went to prison because he was very old when he finally confessed to me and um, died pretty soon afterwards. It was traumatic for him to confess and it was extremely traumatic for me to have him confess because I didn't remember all that much, and he remembered everything vividly. <sighs> anyway, they tortured these little children by putting them in a room with biting insects, and they refused them food and water, and they did other horrible things. I bet you anything, they raped them, because that's what people do to children when they want to torture them. It's a great way to torture a child, is to sexually abuse them. We don't know. The CIA has destroyed all the tapes they made while doing this. The Nazis, you see, made a mistake. They like to document everything. And so when my father came into Germany as an OSS officer during World War II, he stumbled across first Dachau, then Belsen, and then Sachsen. Oh, God. And it traumatized him terribly. And he testified at the Nuremberg trials. And he knew what torture was when he walked in the camps. But you know what? The Nazis didn't know it. They were shocked that he was shocked. They thought there was nothing really wrong. They couldn't tell anymore. They didn't know what shock and awe was. <laughs> they were demons. And the CIA agents who did this torture are demons too. And they have to be brought to international justice just for torturing the children. And... All the other torture was e equally illegal, but it, the torturing the children is just beyond illegal. It's beyond amoral. It is totally inexcusable. And it's one thing if there is someone at the gates of death that judges us. No one's going to get past that person. I consider her to be Libra. Some people think it's Jesus or whoever. Whoever's standing there is not going to let these people go anywhere except to where they can be tortured. Because you don't torture children. And for a government to do it is beyond evil. And Obama doesn't want them arrested. We hung the people who did this in Germany during World War II. And we said war is no excuse for torturing small children. Period. And this is Culture of Life News. Thank you.